Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about handling exceptions that occur within your application. We're going to discuss what can go wrong, why things go wrong, and how to build resilient applications that are impervious to crashing through the use of the try-catch block in Visual Basic. So when the compiler tries to parse through the code that you've written and it finds something like a data type mismatch or an unresolved reference to classes or malformed Visual Basic code, it'll refuse to compile your source code into a .NET assembly until you fix the problem. These types of problems are called compilation errors. However, there are other errors that happen during runtime, or in other words, happen when the compiled .NET assembly is actually executing on your computer or somebody else's computer. And there are countless reasons why this could occur, but many times it's due to situations that are outside of the control of the developer. For example, if your application can't read or write to the disk on the computer because a folder or a file is missing or it's corrupt or because the network access uh, is un uh, unavailable or you're attempting to access a database and something's missing that you're relying on, like a table, or something is just otherwise unavailable. These could all cause your application to experience an exception at runtime. Now in some cases, the developer may not have foreseen the problem and therefore didn't account for it. For example, he allows the users to type in a country, but the user misspells the country name or maliciously types in numbers instead of alphanumeric characters. Uh, so as a software developer, your job is to make sure that you account for these possibilities. Uh, a friend of mine was fond of saying that 80% of all code exists to solve 20% of potential problems that occur. Uh, generally, software developers should be pessimistic about the reliability of all input outside of the program. So if you rely on a file or a network resource, treat it with great suspicion. If you rely on a user to type in data into your application, you should treat it as being evil, like we've said several times. This is the software developer's equivalent to defensive driving. Code defensively. And the way that a Visual Basic developer codes defensively is through the use of a try-catch block. And so I have a perfect example of this. Let's open up the read text file while project. Uh, you can download the code associated with this project from the same place where you downloaded this video or you're streaming this video right now. Uh, you should find a before folder. I'm going to copy out the read text file while project. Now this is the exact same project that we created earlier. It's just if you, if you didn't watch that lesson or if you already overwrote uh, or deleted that from your hard drive, it's available for you here in kind of a pristine state that we're gonna start from. So again, find wherever the projects are saved onto your hard drive from Visual Studio. In my case, uh, my edition and version of Visual Studio places it in the Visual Studio 2010 folders under the My Documents directory and under Projects. So this might be different for you, just be aware of that. But regardless, I'm gonna paste in the read text file while project. I'm going to double click it to find its solution file and I'll double click the solution file. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is try to um, try to kill the application. I'm going to open up the application. Let's see it work correctly first. Okay. So it still works. Great. But what if I change from values.txt and I'm going to change the name of the file to values1.txt. Let's run the application and we get a file not found exception was unhandled. Okay, so we want to prevent this from happening. Uh, it's possible that when we distribute our application, somehow this external file, this values.txt file or values1.txt file becomes deleted, corrupted, put in a different folder, whatever the case might be. We want to account for that possibility. So the way that you do that is with the try catch block and it's really easy to do. Let me go ahead and start surrounding uh, everything with a try catch block and I just typed in try and I hit enter on my keyboard. Let me do that again so you can see it. Just type in try and then I'm going to hit enter and uh, we're going to get the help of the IDE. It will create a code template for us, a code snippet and I'm going to place all of my code right here in this try. So we're going to attempt to do everything in this code block 
But if something bad happens, we want to then handle it here in this catch block. So let me just kind of grab everything. I'll leave the read line out of this. I'm gonna hit Control X on my keyboard, and I'm gonna come up here to the try section and then paste it all in. All right, and here in the catch section, if something bad does happen, I'm gonna write it to the console window and say, uh, something bad happened. Could not read the file. Okay, and we'll leave it kind of generic for right now. So now when we run the application, we get the error message instead of, uh, that we're able to control, rather than the error message that something was unhandled and it presents that to the user. This way at least we can interrupt the process, try something different perhaps even, uh, but at the very least give some feedback on what the user could do differently. All right, so if we do this, let me comment this line of code out. And instead of just giving something bad happen, let's give a little bit more of an explanation. Whenever we're catching the exception that occurs, we can actually inspect this variable called ex, and we could call it anything we want to. By default, they just call it ex, all right? And we'll keep that. So console.writeLine, and this time I'm gonna say something didn't quite work right, and then I'm gonna go zero. And then ex dot, and you can see we can inspect the exception that's thrown or passed to our catch statement. So I could find the source of it, I could find which line uh, it happened on, I can uh, look at the inner exception. The one that I'm gonna focus on is the message just to see exactly what it was that happened and present that to the user. Maybe they can use that to help uh, debug the situation. All right, so something didn't quite work right, could not find the file, and so this might help the user say, oh, it's in a different directory. Here, let me change that and try this again, okay? So first of all, notice that we're catching an exception. An exception is just a class. It's actually a parent class. There are other exception classes that are children of this exception class, and those children are meant to be more specific types of exceptions. Every class within the .NET Framework class library can raise one or more exception classes that will give a hint to your application uh, or a user of exactly what went wrong and why there was an exception. So in the case of a stream reader, we can look online in MSDN and it will list all of the types of exceptions that the stream reader can can raise or throw. And so I just happen to know that there are two specialized versions of exceptions. So I'm gonna type in catch ex as file not found exception. We actually saw this a little bit earlier when we ran it without the try catch block. So here, right line, couldn't find the file. Are you sure you're looking for the right file. I also know that we can catch, sorry, a directory not found exception, in which case we can give an even more descriptive uh, solution to the problem. Couldn't find the file. Are you sure that directory exists. All right, so here we can basically start with the more specific catching and then go to the most generic catch. And that is a common uh, pattern that you'll see whenever you're looking at other people's codes and what you should be doing yourself. Handle every possible exception whenever you're relying on a resource that's outside of your control as a programmer. In this case, we're looking at the file system outside of your control. Do you need to do this whenever you're just working with simple strings and integers? No, you really don't. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. So let's run the application this time, and we'll see that it couldn't find the file. Are you sure you're looking for the right file? All right, and let's change this and look in a subdirectory that I know does not exist, and let's run 
the application again. Couldn't find the file. Are you sure that the directory exists? Great. Okay. So you might be wondering, well, hey, why not wrap the entire application in just one big try-catch block? Well, frankly, that's a bit lazy. Uh, some developers have done that, but they're often ostracized by the end users for providing these cryptic error messages that no human, except maybe the guy who wrote them, even understands. The reason developers do this is because they sometimes take that exact approach, leaving exception handling to the very end of the development process and then bolting it on the side by just wrapping everything in it. Uh, this leads to a catch-all that's convenient for the developer, but it's maddening for the end user. You should always strive to put the same amount of attention into protecting your user from having to guess at what to do next. If you can fix the problem without them knowing about it, then you should do that. If you can't, then identify the exact problem just like we've done here. It's the file name, you sure you got that right? The folder, are you sure that there's a folder with that name? Uh, and then ask the user to uh, for input that you might need to handle the situation gracefully. So you should protect the end user from losing data or feeling stupid at all costs. That is what makes your application polished, and it's what users expect, a reliable experience, no surprises. Okay, so to recap, in this lesson we talked about defensive coding through the use of the try-catch block uh, to plan for the inevitable problems that come as a result of tr uh, trusting any exterior resource. Uh, we talked about handling uh, the more specialized cases first, and then the more general cases next, like we've done in our example. And then we talked about the mindset of the conscientious developer who seeks to advocate and protect the user from losing data and making tough choices choices or feeling dumb. Uh, using a catch-all strategy is really not ideal. You should strive to examine each part of your application that relies on exterior resources and apply a try-catch block judiciously. Okay, great. Doing excellent. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.